Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Art of Tuning In podcast. I'm Maria Furlano. It's great to have you here. This is episode 93 called Grounding Intuition. I'm looking forward to sharing some insights with you today, especially about why we don't want to open certain energy centers too quickly when we're working with our intuition, why grounding is so incredibly important, and why that really connects us through our alignment. So I'm thrilled you're here today. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you for finding this episode. Thank you for finding this podcast. I'm Maria Furlano, and I'm a doctor of medical Qigong, a physician of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, and I'm a spiritual medium. And I've been teaching the energetic arts for over 25 years, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. If you have been here for a while. Thank you for coming back. I so appreciate you. I appreciate all of you taking your time out to tune in. It's a great honor for me. So thank you for being here. There are so many things going on right now at theartoftuningin.com. We have a free weekly holding space, live gathering meditation every single week, totally free that you can go to theartoftuningin.com and register for with the recordings. We have the Tuning In Studio, which is a monthly studio for women to cultivate their energy, to cultivate their intuition, to cultivate their health. And I also have an upcoming class that's going to be an introduction to Qigong, and that's open to everyone. And if you are wondering what Qigong is like, if you're wondering if it's for you, I would love to share that with you. You'll leave with a beautiful, gentle healing set that you can practice on your own. The classes will be recorded. And so I just hope you'll join me over there. But the best way to find out about all the dates that are coming up and everything that's happening right now and everything that's available for you, including working with me privately, is to go to The Art of Tuning In. Dot com. Sign up for Energy Insights and you'll get all of the information. All of the links are below and I look forward to meeting you. So let's jump into grounding intuition because I'm really hoping today that you'll leave with understanding the importance of building your energy centers and why, especially over the long run, it's really going to serve you. So a lot of times in our intuitive growth, intuitive classes that we take, we're wanting so much <laughs> to activate this third eye area and the crown chakra. So third eye, these are energy centers within your head, but the location that is referred to is between your eyebrows and on the crown, the top of the head. These are very strong energy centers where we can tune in to different frequencies, especially high vibrational frequencies, and be able to read energy. So a lot of times people begin to activate their intuition and they will sit down, meditate, and they want immediately, or their whole goal is to open this third eye, to open the crown, to activate it, and to be fully engaged in intuitive skill. <laughs> and I understand why that is often shared, but it goes completely against Eastern energetic trainings. And in medical Qigong, we always, always activate and build our lower energy centers first. And lower energy centers mean the energy that's in our lower belly the energy that's in our root, meaning the first chakra, which is at the root of your spine, the energy that moves through our legs, the energy that goes and connects into the earth. We activate through our feet. All of these things are really important. And we don't move on until that foundation is really strong and fully alive and fully activated. And the reason for that is because it's just like building a house. If you have a very firm foundation, you can build any size house you want. 
you can do amazing things. But if you have a weak foundation, doesn't matter what you build, it's going to fall down. It's going to have problems. There's going to be cracks, whatever it is. It's just not going to be strong. It's exactly the same with our body. Our energy centers move up through our entire body. Our energy centers are throughout our entire body. Our energy fields that surround us radiate from our inner body out. So whatever is happening in our body is a direct reflection of how strong it is, of how much we care for it of what it needs. And when I say what it needs is because every single day we use energy and every single day we need to replenish that energy. And most people replenish that energy through sleep. Now, if you have poor sleep, then you're also not replenishing your energy fully the way you need to. But in Qigong, in meditative practices, there are very specific practices that are set to cultivate or to replenish, to recharge, to grow, to build your energy, which means that every day when you do these practices, your energy levels start out much higher than if you didn't do them. They start out much higher than just having sleep. So it means that your foundation is so strong. And as you go out into your day, as you use your energy, as we all do, we have these energy batteries inside of ourselves. And those are our adrenals. And our adrenals sit on top of our kidneys. And the kidneys are located in our lower back area beneath our ribs. And they hold energy for our whole body. And our kidney energy and again, when I'm speaking in Chinese medicine and medical Qigong terms, understand that all of the organs have energy to them and that energy supports the body. So when I'm talking about the energy of the kidneys, the kidneys house this amazing energy that not only holds our essence, but the kidneys also support our brain, our spine, our bones. So the strength of the kidneys, the strength that we keep our kidney energy on a daily basis is so essential to our daily health, but also of course, to our longevity. So if you're tired, what happens? What happens to our brain mostly? We tend to get foggy headed. We tend to forget things. Sometimes our head will feel heavy because it doesn't have the energy to hold itself up. Sometimes we can get headaches just from being so tired. We don't operate at this optimum level when we're tired, when our energy system is low. We all know that. But what a lot of people don't recognize is how much energy and focus it takes to be working in your intuitive energy. So when we really are focusing from our third eye and from our crown, it takes a lot of energy to stay in an aligned frequency and we're moving to a different frequency. And what I mean by that is, let's say you are calculating numbers. When you're calculating numbers, you're using a piece of your brain, a part of your brain that is very tangible, very logical, very focused in a certain way. When you move into an intuitive state, you move into this aligned state that you learn to be set in, and it is a learning, you practice it and you learn how to hold your vibration in a certain way. And you're tapping into frequencies that are different. They're a different state of being than being in the more logical mindset or the very focused mindset, for example, when you're calculating numbers. It's incredibly hard to sit and add up numbers, subtract numbers, divide numbers, multiply numbers, and try to be in an intuitive place at the same time. It's quite challenging. And it's only because you're using two different parts of your brain. You're using two different energy qualities of yourself. That energy of your kidneys supports your brain. So if you don't have the foundational energy of your kidney energy strong, 
And how do we do that? We do that through medical Qigong exercises. We do that through very specific breathing practices. We do that through certain specific meditation practices that really build the entire lower part of your energy centers, meaning everything within your belly, your root, your hips, your legs, your feet, that becomes so strong energetically that it supports everything above it. When you have that foundation, you're able to hold yourself in an alignment of energy for a longer period of time so that you can have the focus because it does take incredible focus to tune in on energetic levels where you maybe want to tune in a little bit more than just what you're feeling. So let me just explain that really quickly. So every single day we have intuitive information going off. Everybody's intuitive. And most of the time, your intuitive information goes off through your emotional state, meaning you feel something is right. You feel something isn't right. You get pulled in a certain direction. You know, people talk about their gut. I have this gut feeling, right? This gut knowing. And when we're able to tune into that, we can move through life pretty well and much more fluidly than when we resist that. We're going to actually trust the information that's coming to us because it's telling us something very specific for our life. We can flow through intuition very easily in our life. But when you want to sit in an intuitive way, to access deeper information at different levels. You're moving into different frequency to do that. And that takes a different kind of focus. And that focus comes from our ability to be able to hold our center, which actually comes from our ability to have great energetic power in all of our lower energy centers. If we don't have this great power in our lower energy centers, we have not a lot to support the rest of our energy centers, especially up here in our third eye, up here in our crown. And when we go to tune in, when we go to really align ourselves and focus in intuitively, we can get very tired. And people do this a lot. I work with a lot of people who are energetic practitioners and there's a lot of energy that's moving through them and they are not necessarily clearing themselves well enough and they're not fortifying their energy enough, meaning they're not giving themselves enough energetic reboosting, re-energizing. They're not plugging in their battery enough to refill themselves from all that they've given in the day. And this is a big misconception with people who do intuitive work or do energetic healing. They feel so good while they're doing it. They don't think they're using any energy. And over time, and it doesn't have to be a long time, it can be pretty quick. They start to feel depleted. They start to get sick. They emotionally start to go up and down. Habits start to happen for them. Maybe they eat more. Maybe they start to drink. Maybe they use caffeine to fortify themselves because they're not understanding how much energy they're using, how much energy it takes to keep yourself in alignment in this really high frequency that you move into for intuitive work for healing, for being present with someone else. Just holding a state of presence with someone else takes a lot of energy. It's a beautiful thing, but holding space in a safe way for someone else along with yourself or for a group, and this is not only in the healing profession, this is in business. This is Perhaps you're holding a meeting, perhaps you're giving a talk, maybe you're giving a seminar, maybe you're hiring, maybe you're needing to fire people, maybe there's all of these things that you are needing to show up and be present for. As a teacher, you're holding space for all of these students and all of this information. As a mother, as a father, you're holding space for your home and your children, and you're providing all of these beautiful things for them. That's holding space that is holding a certain way of being. And we don't realize how much energy we give out every single day, no matter what we're doing. 
and it needs to be refilled and replenished. And of course, this is why I love Qigong and this is why I love energetic practices because they're very specific in giving you a totally different energetic strengthening than sleeping does. Now, sleeping is wonderful. And one of the issues with sleeping is a lot of people are not sleeping well enough. So they're not going deep enough. So they're not restoring their body enough. That changes also when you start to use energetic practices in a cultivation way, meaning that you're rebuilding your body because now your body is resetting itself in a very different way. So it's able to rest differently at night too. So it's able to absorb that energy. Coming back to what happens when we're using all of our energy centers and we're reading energy. So we talk all the time about the third eye and the crown chakra. And a lot of times in meditation, people meditate and they really want to leave the body. And I've talked about this before, because this is a very big deal in medical Qigong training where medical Qigong, we work with the energy of the body, meaning that our focus is that the body is able to hold more and more energy, meaning your cells are able to absorb and hold an elevated frequency of energy, which takes time because it absorbs and it readjusts. It absorbs and it readjusts. It absorbs and it resets, right? So we're readjusting, we're resetting ourselves and we're expanding. That takes time. Otherwise, I've said before in other podcasts, it's like watering a plant. You overwater the plant, all the dirt just comes out the bottom of the plant and all the nutrients wash away with the dirt, give ourselves too much energy. If we're doing our energetic practices that are not in the most fortifying and holding way, we don't give ourselves time to recover in between. We don't give ourselves time to reset and allow ourselves to expand. Our energy is going to deplete itself. It has to, because it won't hold on to it because it says, nope, too much. And it just will let it go. And so now we're not really nourishing. We're nourishing to the point where we need to deplete again. But if you lightly water the plant and you give it just enough to that it can absorb and grow and then a little more. So it absorbs and grows. Now the plant is able to absorb the full nourishment of the water and of the nutrients that are in the soil. So our body is just like nature energetically. So when I return back to understanding all of your energy centers and how they work, understand that opening the third eye and opening the crown is just one area of energy that you read energy with. And when you cultivate all of the lower energy centers of your body, your third eye and your crown begin to open naturally. And that's really what we want. We never, ever want to force the opening of the third eye and the crown. Never. We want that to be organic. We need to be patient. And if we do it correctly, if we understand that we are building the strength of our foundation and we understand that from that foundation upward, we're cultivating all of our energy centers will follow suit. Because remember, you have energy centers that are moving through the entire center of your body. You have energy centers in all parts of your body, and you are reading energy everywhere. Now, when we have our energy centers in all of our body that are reading energy everywhere, it would make sense that they might need some clearing. It might make sense that they might be taking on a lot of energy and they need a really good energetic shower. When we open the third eye or the crown too quickly, what about all of the rest of the energy in our body? But when we start opening up our lower centers and we also understand clearing our energy, now it's almost like we turn a switch on and all of our energy centers go into alignment. They all activate as they need to in their own time. When you do that, when your energy centers are activated, you begin to understand that the third eye is only one place that we give energy from and we receive energy from. 
but we also receive from our throat. We also receive from our heart. We also receive from our solar plexus and from all of our lower energy centers. So it isn't just our third eye and our crown. And when we learn to receive information, when I say receive information, I mean, you're picking up information from what's around you. So you're receiving that information, just like a message. You're receiving a message and these energy centers translate that message that you receive and then make a decision or send back energy to that message. When all of these energy centers are online, now you're using your entire vessel to receive and to give energy. So you're moving through your life in a totally different way than just your thinking center or your logical center, because now your whole body is a vibration of activation and you are able to understand information in a different way, able to give information in a different way, meaning that when you're in tune, when you're really in alignment with yourself, you vibrate differently. And when you vibrate differently, everybody feels that. Everybody feels how we vibrate. When you walk up to somebody, you might not see the energy, you might not hear the energy, you might not fully understand it, but you can sense something about that person. You can sense probably how they're feeling that day, even if you don't fully understand it. How strong is their energy? You can sense these things. We sense it with each other all the time. So the same is true for us. And when we shift and change and align our energy, when we clear out things that we don't need, we vibrate differently. When we learn how to cultivate our foundation and we are able to support our energy in a different way, we shine differently and we impact every single person that we come into an interaction with whether it's in person, on the phone, on the computer, wherever it is, our energy precedes us. So that's really important because that is where we really change our whole state of being. And that is where if everybody were to really understand how their energy worked and really understood how to clear their energy and how to support their energy, our world would shift very quickly because we would all be moving through life in a very different state. We would be interacting with each other in a very different state. We would be listening to each other from a very different state and we would be responding in a very different way. One of the things that I want to leave you with today is really understanding the connection of your feet, your feet, your feet, your feet. <laughs> so I sent out an email this week to my community and we were talking about energy alignment. And I mentioned that it's always from foot to head. In medical Qigong and in Tai Chi and in all martial arts, every movement is through the connection of the earth into your foot, through your legs, into the rest of your body. We don't just move our arm, we move our arm from our foot connection. And it's a very different way of moving through life. And we bring that, not only that physical connection to the earth, but we bring that energetic connection from the earth through us. If you can spend some time, first of all, just connecting with your feet, because it's an area that if it's new for you, chances are you're not that connected with your feet. So that's okay. Just give yourself time. You want to connect with your feet. You want to take your shoes off, put your feet on maybe a soft carpet, or if you're by the beach, you can go in the sand or in the grass or wherever's comfortable, even in water. And you want to tune completely into your feet. Say hello to your feet. You know me, I'm always saying hello. We're introducing our energy to ourselves. A lot of times we have cut off ourselves from our body and a reintroduction can give us a lot of wisdom. So as you introduce or reintroduce yourself to your feet, say hello and just be with them. Maybe be with one then the other, be with both, move your toes and move into the soles of your feet and feel the connection of your soles into the earth. If you're in water, feel the connection of your souls in the water. 
and understand that the tips of your toes are entry and exit points to all of your meridians, to all of the energy pathways that flow through your body, as are the tips of your fingers. But as you connect with your feet, your soles, the soles of your feet are greatly connected to the energy of your kidneys. And as you connect with the earth or you connect with the water, allow that energy to move through your feet. Feel your feet absorb them and then allow that energy to move up through your legs. Feel your legs connected to the earth, connected to the water, depending on what you're doing. Allow it to move up through your hips and allow it to move into your lower belly and into your kidneys again, which you can just think about in your lower back area if you'd like. And feel how you can absorb energy from the earth, how you can absorb energy from water. And just that alone, just connecting with your feet, just allowing that connection to move through your legs, just allowing that connection to activate and give you some energy in your belly, allowing it to move into your kidneys, your lower back area, you will get an energetic boost that you may not have ever experienced before. And if you want to learn more, of course, come on over and we'll learn how to do that standing, seated, and moving. But the first key is to tune into your feet. Feet, feet, feet. <laughs> feet are so important. And the earth, because those are our connections. I hope that gives you some insights today into the importance of really creating a strong foundation physically for your energy and why it's so important as you activate the rest of your energy centers. And I hope you'll practice the feet in the water, in the earth, moving through your legs, into your belly, into your lower back, into your kidneys, and let me know how it feels for you. Leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Please like the video, leave a review. If you're listening on a podcast app, I so appreciate you here. And it really really helps me reach more people. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful week, and I will see you in the next episode.